have no entertainment whatsoever. Even at particular occasions, does life only have to be based on religion? Uh, let me answer the second part of the question before the first. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my death are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So yes, your life is based on religion, strictly. Now part of the teachings of the religion is that anything that Allah created is lawful for you. Unless there's an evidence that says otherwise. You like to ride a bicycle? Go ahead. You like to fly a plane? Go ahead. You like to go in a car? Go ahead. You like to crawl on your feet? Do whatever you want. Everything is lawful. Right? You want to write on a piece of paper? You may do so. You want to jump? You may do so. Life is lawful. And this is part of the teachings of Islam. Unless there's an evidence that says, don't do that. You see? So everything concerning the worldly life is halal. Mubah. Is allowed unless there's an evidence that says, don't do that. Why? In order to protect you from harm. Whereas in the matters of the religion, acts of worship, everything is forbidden unless there's an evidence which allows you to do it. You cannot worship God according to your way. Well, let's come up with a new uh, annual celebration. You see what I'm saying? We say you cannot do that. Barakallah feek. Because it was not revealed by God. Okay? So this is the second part of the question. Uh, should the Muslims then have no entertainment whatsoever? Wallahi, we have plenty of entertainment. I swear by Allah, we are very entertained individuals within the lawful limitations. If you mean by entertainment that which is unlawful, then yes. But you must be uh, not mindful of the halal entertainment that we have. Have you ever been to the ocean during the time of the sunset and observed the sun setting in the ocean and you seen the birds flying? Isn't that entertainment? Wallah, this is entertainment. People go and draw this and sell it for millions of, of riyals because of this image that you are seeing. Barakallah feek. Live. This is entertainment. You go to the park, you play with your children, they go on the swings, they, you know, they go on the slide, they go run, you play soccer, you play basketball, you play tennis, you play cricket, whatever you play. This is all halal. This is all entertainment. So don't let the devil trick you by thinking only things that are unlawful, this is entertainment. Looking at a wallah, TV. The TV, this is what the people, now people nowadays associate, you know why? Because they call the thing that they put the TV on, entertainment center. This is where this misconception came. Because it's called entertainment center, where the TV sits, so then that's entertainment only. So if you don't have a TV, oh what a boring life. You don't have a TV? I've had people say this, you don't have a TV? <laughs> you okay, Akhi? Did you graduate from any crazy uh, hospital or some, some... Why? Since when was the TV furniture? Since when was the TV like the pants that you wear? You can't go around without TV. People have lived without TV for many years. Life goes on. So you may use the TV lawfully. Yeah, actually there's a lot of good stuff on TV. Animal Planet. Huh? The Discovery Channel. You find some amazing things. Of course you put mute whenever there's, you know, uh, music. Otherwise, it's, it's beautiful. And then you could watch Islamic channels and so on and so forth. Again, some, some, some things for the children. These are okay. But if you want to watch Wallah, uh, Baywatch, you know, if you remember that nonsense, or some, some, some silly stuff that I have on TV, then yes, yes, Islam does not allow you to do that. Because your mind will be corrupted. Your mind will be corrupted. Next time you go to the beach, you think that you're one of these people, and then you wind up drowning and no lifeguard or, will save you. And then you just drown on your own. And you wind up ending in a horrible way. Allah stand. I think this came first. Uh, you say, more sir, you do more calamity befall upon you. Uh, same way I have heard the person who is closer to God will be tested. Uh, okay, the most. Please explain. Yes. The asal is the, the principle, the foundation. If a calamity befalls upon you, it is due to your sins. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ Whatever calamity befalls upon you, Allah says, is because of what you have earned with your own hands. And He pardons a lot. This is the principle. But, if you are a righteous person, and I don't think any one of us can say this about himself. That's why we don't speak in this context. If you're really a righteous person, then yes, calamities on, in your case, maybe because Allah wants goodness for you. 
And we have other narrations which indicate that if Allah loves a servant, He will test them abundantly. If Allah wants to raise your, your degree in paradise, and you're unable to attain this high degree in paradise with your deeds, Allah will test you with calamities in order to have this particular status in paradise. That's why the prophets and the messengers, the best of people, were tested the most. But this is for the pious, because we cannot purify ourselves. We cannot say, I cannot say about myself, you cannot say about yourself, Allah, I'm a pious brother or I'm a pious sister. So we assume it's because of our sins. It may be otherwise. But I cannot tell you, this is from the knowledge of the unseen. No one knows but Allah, but your point is correct. Yes, it may be the other way around. Wallahu alam. You talked about the eyes, uh, what about the heart, and uh, what it concealed from bad thoughts, ideas. Please elaborate more uh, when you're sinful. What if, it did, uh, what if you did not do it? Are you rewarded? Naam, that is actually, mashallah, tabarakallah, very, a very particular point uh, that the time did not allow to entertain. I really didn't have it part of the lecture. I'm not saying that I did. Uh, but I was thinking of time-wise, we cannot deal with this because we deal in the, uh, the, the what is known as the khatira, then, uh, the, uh, then it becomes azim, and it has a number of stages, the thought. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, dealt with that. That it begins with a glance, then it if you fight it, then it goes away, if, if then it's a thought. If you fight it, it becomes some determination. There are stages of thought. Uh, yes, if you, uh, we, the thoughts that are sinful, if you have the intent to do them, but you're unable to do them, you are considered to be sinful. If you had the intent to do something sinful, then you left it alone for the sake of Allah, you would be rewarded for leaving alone that sinful act. So, but this is a whole nother discussion that I don't have, I'm not really ready to be dealing with it in an elaborated fashion. So I will not try to do so right now. Perhaps inshallah in the future lectures, we will try to give some time to this particular reality dealing with, uh, you know, the, act, the heart. We will deal with the heart inshallah at some point in time. Do women have to cover their faces? This every lecture, almost, which according to some uh, scholars does not fall under hijab in front of their brother, uh, brother-in-laws? Oh, hold on a second, man. You changed the whole subject matter here. I thought that the discussion was whether the woman has to cover her face and her hands as a difference among the fuqaha concerning the wujub of covering the face and the hands. Uh, the brother-in-law? Man, this is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, mawt. Alhamu, mawt. Your brother-in-law is death. Uh, yani, uh, this is one of the Sahaba said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you know, we may enter upon women. You know, we may enter upon our women, female relatives. So he said, do not do that. He said, what if it's the brother-in-law? He said, alhamu, mawt. The brother-in-law, this is death. Yani, this is the most severe level. Of a man entering upon a woman because of the nature of comfortability between them. Well, he's the husband, he's the brother, he's my husband's brother. But that is the mushkila. Because when people get too free, too comfortable with one another, this is where you have incest come around. And you've seen some of the recent events took place in the world. A man, you know, Audu Billah with his I mean, we cannot even say this publicly. So these, you know, shaitan is working. So no, no, no. Whether it is the, whether you have the opinion of covering the face and the hands or uncovering the face and the hands, a, a brother-in-law can never see you without the hijab. He can never enter upon you in the room, huh? If there's no other person with you, otherwise it becomes khalwa, it becomes seclusion. And so this, uh, we dealt with this actually topic uh, in our lecture, previous lecture, uh, which was the strictly following the sunnah versus the religion is easy. You may get the DVD inshallah later on and watch it again in order to see what exactly is expected of you in this regard. Uh, how many times you could look at a uh, woman which is not what, not lawful Islamically? Once! <laughs> and you should not, uh, and the duration is short. So the number of times is